So this is a, it's going to be pretty basic. Um, my, my original intention was to create a cool chat application for, for the Firehose community, but because of the rawness and alpha status of Action Cable, it just wasn't going to happen. So instead, I tried to break down as many of the parts and kind of give you all some background on what you need to know to start getting working with it. So really the big question is, what's the big deal? Um, so Action Cable is designed to be a real-time communication framework. Uh, and what that means is that you will have instant updates. So you'll have like an instant chat. So the, the minute that you send something, it, you receive it the exact same, well, realistically, it's a little bit later, but you'll receive it almost instantaneously. Um, and the big thing is the integration of WebSockets with Rails. As of right now, there's tons of third-party third applications and random ways to hack it into Rails, but it's not really baked into it. So this is the attempt to, to bake WebSockets right into the Rails application using the API. And so it's going to be a full-stack offering, which means that you have a client-side JavaScript and server-side Ruby. And of course, it's just the new hotness in Rails 5. Um, like I said, it exists because of a high demand for push notifications and real-time features. And Ken and I were talking about it earlier, and I think it really is uh, a response to Elixir, which has a lot of this stuff baked right into it. You can use it right out the gate. There's a lot of JavaScript frameworks that do the same thing. Um, Rails has always had, and Ruby for that matter, has always had issues with getting WebSockets to work properly. Um, and that's why they kind of want the out of the box support for it. And because Basecamp. Um, from what it sounds like, they're, they're using uh, Action Cable and WebSockets to implement their real time chat stuff. So the moving parts. Right now, you have to use. Redis basically is a middleman. Puma is going to be your web server that handles the processing of incoming and outgoing. Um, and then WebSockets, and then the channels will be um, your publish and subscriptions, and then Action Cable itself. So Puma is just a concurrent web server. Uh, Rails has an issue with doing multiple connections at once. So people started creating the ability to do concurrent connections. So you have a parallel incoming and outgoing. So it really speeds up and handles multiple connections all at once. And when you deal with something like WebSockets and what Action Cable is doing, you're dealing with potentially thousands of connections coming in and out all at one time. Redis is going to serve sort of as a middleman, and that's going to be a data structure. Redis is a data structure server, and that is kind of caches everything in data or in memory. So you have a very fast read write response time, and then Action Cable actually leverages the pub sub feature in Redis, which is the publish and subscription feature. And then WebSockets are full duplex connections over single uh, TCP IP connections. Um, basically, all that means is that you have an upstream and a downstream running at the exact same time. You don't have to wait for one coming to you, do a lot of stuff, respond, and then come back. You have full duplex. It's not single duplex. Um, and really. WebSockets are the special sauce behind all push notifications and real-time features. So anytime that you use a chat application, most likely it's being leveraged by WebSockets. And then channels in Action Cable is going to be the pub sub stuff. So you have channels and you have connections. So the channels is going to be the subscriber, which basically is the server, is the publisher, and then anybody that's connecting to a message is a subscriber. So like um, Slack, for instance, their server is the publisher, and all of us end users are the subscribers. And we subscribe to a published 
channel that they're sending out. So why does this all even matter? Um, basically, it's just adding all the stuff that a lot of people have been wanting, finally, and trying to work that into Rails, which is kind of uh, lacking in a lot of departments, and I think Ruby's lacking in a lot of departments. But uh, it's really jumping into this real-time stuff. And it really kind of sets the, the standard for streaming in the future with uh, WebSockets. So at the time, and what the intention of it is, and the possibilities is right now, um, the only real examples are for chat applications. And I'll show you a quick example of that too once we're done. Um, and then like real-time feeds. So Twitter could be potentially a WebSocket-based feed. So it's really instant. Um, and I don't know how uh, Scala does it, and I, that's what Twitter's using to handle all that stuff. So I don't know if they're still using it off WebSockets or not, but um, it's pretty instantaneous. And then API calls. So you have uh, basically instant API calls, which would be very heavy in the financial data sector. Um, so dealing with stock markets, I can't imagine anybody ever wanting to build um, any sort of stock trading on Rails Engine, but I guess that was one of the intentions. And then just uh, real-time collaborative software. And I actually sent out a tweet maybe a month ago to DHH, and I thought, wow, um, this could be a great opportunity to build an awesome video streaming service with Rails, but it actually doesn't work that way. So anything that requires a JSON encoded request will work perfectly. Anything that is a binary uh, sent request, which would be video, won't work with Action Cable. And then I just got some resource here. These are the stuff that I went over. And just that, and I'll show you quickly. Um, so I actually, if you go to um, GitHub, I just forked the repo. Um, but this is the action cable examples. You can use this and set it up, and I did, but I broke it right before the video call, so that's not working, but I built a different one that's not quite as fleshed out as this one is, but it just kind of shows you how quickly it is. So you can just put in a username here, and a username here, and because this is all based off of sessions, you'll need, obviously, you need to have two different windows. So I have an incognito and just a standard web browser. So this is just pretty much an example of, you know, the instant um, feedback between, between it. It's buggy. It's not perfect, but uh, it's functional. So that's about it. Anybody have questions? Cool, good stuff. So I have one. So like this is kind of like a, a nitty gritty question, but uh, most of the time uh, you configure servers um, only on like production because you don't care about sort of like local host. Um, but due to like the, the, you said you needed to use Puma. Do you always need to use Puma or do you just need to use Puma if you actually need to scale beyond having like two concurrent requests or something? You can use Unicorn as well, um, but you have to have a web server of some sort. You can't just use the standard rail server. Um, you have to have something that can do process those requests. So uh, they suggest using Puma only because it can handle multiple requests. And actually, there's um, I can find Puma's website. They have a cool little graph of kind of the response. And I don't know how any of this is going to work with HTTP 2.0. Um, that wasn't even covered. I know. Uh, the guys are working on that stuff. So I'll just share my screen. So this is the graph of the responses with Puma versus I think Unicorn is in the yellow and this is in Puma. So it's just basically saying how many responses and how many requests it can handle and, and at once. So 
if it's just one-on-one, -on -one, I don't think you would need Puma, but you'll need something. If it's going to be thousands of connections, I think you definitely need Puma. Interesting. Since it's getting baked into Rails, it'd be interesting to see if they change the default like web server because like if they're shipping with Action Cable, maybe they'll change it from being WebRick to Puma or something. That's really interesting. Yeah, and I don't. I think they might have to if you're going to use it. I mean, uh, right now you have to do a bunch of extra stuff. So I'll just share my screen again and show you. But um, so like. Where is it? So right now you have to run this cable file. You have to run the Rails server and you have to run Redis. And in the cable file is actually where it's calling Puma. So you'll have that actually in your bin files. So I don't know how they're gonna handle that. There's there's so much unknown about it that that's why it made it really difficult to kind of even try to tackle any of it. <laughs> I can only imagine. Cool, cool. Anybody else have any other questions? Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I have the, just one question. Um, while giving your presentation, I was reading also a bit, and I found out that Action Cable is actually based on FIE. Um, that's yeah. a WebSocket service that, that is already used. So. Is it correct for me then to assume that Rails itself really won't be able to handle performance issues as that will be yeah, handled by FIES? Because as I understand correctly, the action cable is just uh, an extra level on, on the FIES web sockets. I believe what their end game is, is to do it themselves, bake that right in instead of using a third party gem. I think that's kind of why the, the call to action was because there's been so many people like Pusher and and a lot of stuff. And then they even have action, or is it called action jobs or something like that um, for all their background processes as a response so they can handle all that. And it's very heavy whenever you run this is it's running a lot of stuff in the background. So I don't know. I read that too. And again, there's like so little information on why they're doing it, but that's kind of been like the the number one go-to WebSocket fix for Rails. So I believe they're trying to leverage that actually into the framework. Yeah. So I don't know if they're gonna bundle that gem. Uh, it sounds like nobody knows what the hell they're gonna actually end up doing. Every podcast I've listened to, every uh, tweet I've seen when Action Cable pops up that isn't directly response from DHH, everybody's like, I don't know. <laughs> Cool.